Greetings, adventurers. Welcome to Casters and Castles. I'm tormented by gnomes. It is my privilege and my delight to be your game master on tonight's sponsored stream into the world of Steinhardt's Guide to the Eldritch Hunt, brought to you by Monkey DM. I'm also overjoyed to be joined at my table by a group of fantastic role players. Let's go ahead and let them introduce themselves, starting with Briggsy. Hola. You may not know me. I have not been in many one shots. I don't know what you mean. This doesn't exist. My name is Briggsy. Um, I work as an indie games producer, uh, as well as a tweeter. I do some Overwatch League content as well. Um, also mainly ship posting as well. Um, I basically love this kind of stuff. I've been playing D&D. I'm actually probably the newest one here. I've actually only played regularly for the past eight months. I've enjoyed every minute since, and I'm also found in the Shh miniseries along with my dear friend Pixie that usually airs every Tuesday. Um, other than that, I tend to be drawn to a lot of uh, steampunk, eldritch horror kind of one shots. so I was honored to be a part of this one. On brand, 100% on brand. And making a Casters and Castles debut, I'm excited to have Katie Asaurus with us. Welcome. Let's go. Hi, everybody. I'm Katie Asaurus. You can call me Kate. Um, I am a full-time content creator, Twitch partner, streamer, uh, doer of things on the internet. Primarily, I talk about ADHD and mental health, especially in sex and uh, TTRPG spaces, which is, you know, Venn diagrams, like a stack of pancakes anyway, so who cares? Uh, and I don't usually do uh, eldritch horror nightmare content, but Leroy Jenkins... <laughs> what I have to say, and I didn't think of anything else. So here we go. Spooky uh, times. <laughs> Understandable. Too Have a nice day. <laughs> no stranger to the Casters and Castles community. Always a pleasure to have Pixie Riot at my table. Welcome. Hey, friends. Uh, I'm Pixie. I'm a illustrator, designer, content creator, dungeon master, general whatever doer um i really like D, &D and i uh have been able to um not entirely make a living but like you know uh, make a good space for myself on the internet um talking about and making content for D, D. so uh always happy to be here on casters and castles um i dm for the channel off and on i uh, i show up to play when i can and uh delighted to be here tonight bit of a goat also plug your stuff i love plug your you stuff. I will. We'll get. We can okay. do that later. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll 100 make room for plugs throughout the show, especially at the end. Sorry, producer mind is like. <laughs> oh no, you're good. There. You know, leg day's in chat right now, and and leg day's always the one who's like, "Don't forget the ad read." Does it really? I knew he does it. I knew it. He does yeah. do that in this. <laughs> Last yeah, but not least, about that. That's awesome. Last but not least, I am excited to have at my table also for the first time, Mustache Babs. Welcome to Casters and Castles. Hi everyone, I'm Babs, uh, also known as Mustache Babs. I'm a writer and editor, uh, spending my time on the internet sharing my knowledge and uh, making new contacts. I love tabletop, it's a great outlet for creativity. Uh, and I'm excited to be here. What a, what a pleasure to be here and uh, get on with the spooky. <laughs> Excellent. So a little bit about tonight's adventure. It's a Steinhardt's Guide to the Eldritch Hunt. I think it's Soulsborn with a real Bloodborne vibe to it, slash Lovecraft, slash I got some Darkest Dungeon vibes off of it. Mm. It's a huge book that's coming out on Kickstarter. The Kickstarter ends Friday, I believe. I'll get those dates out there for you. Uh, it's got Demented Foes, Twisted Abomination, Eldritch Moons that completely twist and change the entire world. Uh, huge, huge tables for rolling all sorts of Eldritch corruption effects, monsters, subclasses. It is wildly successful right now on Kickstarter, and you can find out more about it if you're live with us by typing exclamation point Steinhardt in chat. I will do it first because spelling. And if you're watching in the future, just look down below the description. You'll see a link right there. Super grateful to them, not only for sponsoring this show, but for providing us with tonight's adventure, The Remedy. Which He's is straight up beat you to it. Yeah, you like Davey. Straight up beat you yeah. to it. Again, like Dave, he's a champion. He's on it. He's on it. He's out here. Tonight's adventure yeah, really will contain here. themes of horror, some disturbing imagery, some body horror, a couple of little medical things. So viewer discretion is advised, but I will be my best do my best to be your guide through 
the horrors of this world. And before we get into it, does anybody need anything from me, the DM? I think you're great. Yeah. Thank you. I, I second that motion. That's all I wanted. Yep. We'll see if you still feel that way in three hours. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Bring it on. I'm ready for it. <laughs> During tonight's adventure, you can participate slash make either my or my players' lives interesting by spending your channel points. We've also got stream loots cards in play and active that you can use to give them boons and banes, exclamation point, stream loots in the chat. And any revenue that comes in from the stream will be spread amongst all these wonderful people that you see with us. And uh, without further ado, I think we're good to begin. We join our heroes as they approach the great city of Luyarnha. It has been some weeks since you were approached by a well-dressed messenger carrying a sealed letter from a Luyarnhan noble addressed to the party. Having heard of your previous exploits, adventures, and daring do, the letter was written in an overly ornate style and the expensive looking paper closed with unadorned green wax no seal, no signet upon it. It read as follows. Greetings, brave heroes of fate and fortune. I beseech the pleasure of thy company at my months with the utmost of haste. Luyarnha and its people are suffering terrible circumstances that grow by the minute, and adventurous persons such as yourselves are needed to relieve us of the strange afflictions plaguing our city. In appreciation of your professional assistance and discretion in these sensitive matters, I pledge a reward of a thousand pieces of gold. Entry to our great city is regulated due to our current troubles, so you must tell the guards your purpose for admission is as merchants looking to purchase peculiarly large beds. And my agent will meet you. I look forward to speaking with you soon. May the light forever shine upon thee. T.R. Holding this letter in your hands as you stand on the outskirts of the great city of Luyarnha, there are terrified families and refugees fleeing away from the city. You've been seeing more and more of them on your travels as you made your way along. Let us now see who it is that we find along these roads, starting with Briggsy's character. Uh, well, Esmeralda is known for being the bane, as in being the bane of everyone's existence. Uh, she's a crime lord who is based outside of the city, and she tends to work particularly underground. Not much is known about her activities, other that it has made her a lot of money and that she has links all over the land. So she's kind of reading this letter. She almost kind of took her time getting to this location because she doesn't want to get involved in this kind of thing. But seeing as this letter may have some sort of effect on her own personal finances and on her own businesses. That's why she decided to take heed and see what was going on. Um, she basically shows up in kind of a suit. So like kind of like a pants, sort of whatever can constitute as a blazer at that particular point in time. Um, some little ornates, like ornaments around her that denotes just her status, but not too ostentatious because obviously she wants to lay low. Uh, she has a tail that is prehensile as well. So with her tail, she's kind of holding on to a couple of, you know, a couple of bags that she would need for her trip of her equipment, has two horns growing out of her hair and is basically wearing a hood that she cut holes out and puts horns in because for some reason she has not figured out that she does not need to wear the hood because she's occupied with more important things. Um, but she has basically bright red hair, probably deep blue skin, almost black, pale white eyes and all the time she's basically holding uh, a crossbow that she has on her right side that's decorative with runes that she carved herself that notify of all the, that basically tell people the amount of kills that she has acquired from it. And that's Esmeralda. Excellent. Traveling alongside Esmeralda, pushing your way past or being pushed as carts and wagons and just desperate folk clutching all they have with them stream in the exact opposite direction that you're heading. Katie Asaurus, why don't you tell us about your character? Uh, coming up this road, uh, there is a large seven and a half, maybe eight foot tall 
figure. Uh, he is covered in fur, um, but that fur is graying and it's a little wizened and it's you know, kind of, uh, you know, getting maybe a little, little sparse on top. Uh, and he has a little monocle that he wears. Um, and this is Consulus, who is uh, a bugbear. Uh, and he is wearing uh, like a like a very well tailored uh, kind of vest with a spot for like a little pocket watch uh, and some very well tailored pants that are slashed at the knees and his shirt is slashed at the elbows to make room for just his huge sort of muscular form. Um, but he is old. He is an he is an older bugbear, uh, and you can tell that kind of like age is starting to set in as he walks, um, and he carries a a big sort of like backpack rucksack looking thing with him, um, and he kind of you know looks here and there, and he doesn't he wants to make sure that he's not in the way, and so he sort of hunches over, makes himself a, a just you know infinitesimally smaller than he than he can be, um, and that is Consulus. I love him immediately. I know. Can I keep him? Pixie, sure. tell us about your character <laughs> who struggles along this road towards the city of Lu Yarnha. Um, a, a sort of a dark or even desaturated, you could say, figure slipping in and out. Um, Lesiath is wearing a long, almost black cloak pulled around to hide most of her face. The little bits of, of her face that might be visible here and there as she moves through the crowd are also very gray. Um, little bits of, uh, of grayish purple hair stray around her face, but for the most part, um, she seems to be making an effort to draw no attention to herself. Um, she doesn't make eye contact she doesn't um she doesn't uh, move in front of people very often she's slipping behind and between headed for the gate um normally a summons wouldn't necessarily draw her attention but she likes going places where people aren't supposed to be and so an invitation to a city that is normally so closed off is not the type of thing that she is able to say no to. Um, but that's about all that you can see of her to begin with as she's really shrouded herself in this dark gray cloak. Mm, a suspicious bunch for a suspicious job. Babs, why don't you tell us about your character before we proceed? Absolutely. So uh, actually, the least suspicious of the bunch is perhaps Bianca, who walks with confidence and purpose, despite the sort of mournful feeling all around us. Uh, she is a variant tiefling uh, and wears sort of military clothing. She's got this long naval uh, coat on that uh, despite not having any sort of affiliations with any sort of military cohorts, looks pretty official and allows her to sort of command presence wherever she goes, uh, whether she is really supposed to be there or not. Uh, she does not have a tail uh, and her uh, skin is sort of like uh, a lighter tone of red than one would expect from a tiefling. And she's got uh, sort of smaller ram horns and her hair is sort of like washed out blonde and in a very well-kept um, braid. The one extrovert who dragged the three introverts to the party. <laughs> it was always fun. Yeah. It's usually me. <laughs> The sky is filled with heavy clouds as the picturesque Luyarnha comes into sight. Even without the moonlight, the sprawling city sparkles with dancing lights. The beautiful arched bridges and gently curving towers are a testament to its history of art and wealth, while the gleaming metal machines are a monument to their advanced technology. Moonlight breaks through the clouds just as the towering gates loom ahead, and shadows dance across the walls as raging distant fires can now be seen. The city's beauty fades quickly with each step closer as the crumbling walls and decay come into sight. Even the moon takes on an orange hue 
as if reflecting the seemingly burning city below. And as the moon comes into sight, we have our very first act of God. What? I'm going to need each of you to roll a wisdom saving throw, please. <laughs> that can't be so bad early. at all. Don't worry, everything's fine. Everything's completely fine. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, it's great. It's fantastic. All right. Decent numbers, decent numbers. The animation was pretty good, though, by the way. Not as good? Did I get from everybody so far? One of you might be set to whisper to the DM. Let me check. Oh, that was me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Rip. That's all right, but it was a natural 20. Can't what? confirm. I'll screenshot Woo! it if anyone, if anyone questions yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I have proof. Don't lie. I'm not lying. <laughs> exactly. All right. So, Esmeralda, you're also in good shape. Now, we have a couple of lower rolls here, and it looks oh. like Pixie, chat has already elected to give you inspiration. Would you like Ooh. to use it before I give you the results? Um, oh, yes. All right. Next yes. up, somebody bail out Bianca. Go ahead and roll a second time at natural 20. Okay. Nice. nice. Regrettably um, leaving- Thank you, chat. This is extrovert prejudice. I don't appreciate this. Yeah, like, come on. <laughs> All right. Bianca, as you gaze upon the moon, <laughs> your mind is filled with a brief vision. The moon itself engulfed in flames. It's only there for a moment. It leaves a disconcerting air in its passage. None of the rest of the party saw this. You have approached the city. You stand before the gates. There are guards all around. I would like, but yeah, and you can already tell that the city is in a state of disrepair. Fires burn throughout it. The moon is this eerie, haunting orange hue. Before you approach the gates, is there anything you wish to do? You're still, you've still got refugees and families evacuating all around you. Uh, would I be able to inquire uh, one of the refugees as to what exactly they're fleeing from? Absolutely. So uh, Esmeralda is basically going to, I suppose there's like a family that's just, just rushing by next to her. And so mm -hmm. she kind of takes a foot and stomps on one of the cloaks. Ooh. And it turns out to be, <laughs> it turns out to be uh, I think, the mother of the family. And so mm -hmm. she turns around and asks her, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I know you're in quite a bit of a hurry, obviously. Um, but do you mind asking me why you're leaving besides all the death and destruction that's surrounding us? Uh, Luyarnia was once a great city full of hope and prosperity. Sickness has spread among the population. A large section is under quarantine and we barely escaped. Oh, you mean a plague? Yes, a terrible plague. Uh, how do you know how many were affected or? The Ruby District is all but sealed off. People are having strange visions. The city is literally tearing itself apart. The infected are transforming into violent beasts. At the description of violent beasts, Consulus's ears will perk up, uh, and he'll. Uh, I'm going to assume that he was like kind of following behind, so he like caught wind of this, mm -hmm. um, and he'll say, "Violent beasts. Um, what?" What kind of violent beasts? They are themselves but twisted, their hands racked into terrible claws, their visages distorted, the flickering orange light in their eyes, their teeth filled with fangs where once, once normal teeth were there, their minds distorted and bent, turned to violence. That sounds awesome. <laughs> Not quite how I would describe it, but uh, and Bianca sort of like rests her hands on her on her rapier's pommel, um, sort of tightens at the having seen the visions, and the idea of these uh, violent beasts. Yeah, Lysia pulls her cloak tighter around her, but she's she's got a dagger in hand and ready underneath it. All right, the mother is eager to be on her way with her children, to be as far from this wretched place as possible. Is there anything else that you seek to find out before you approach the gates? 
Um, this goes for all of you, of course. Uh, I mean, Esmeralda's here for death and destruction. <laughs> hey, you're in the right place. Yeah, I so think she's just looking around the gates and everything, see if there's anything that she could find in terms of, like, picking up discarded yeah. weapons and items. Yeah, I think Bianca's sort of looking, is there still any semblance of, like, a guard at this gate that we were told mm -hmm. um, that we could sort of report to and make our way in? Yes. When you're ready to proceed, you can tell that the uh, there are imposing statues flanking the city gates and uniformed guards standing alongside it. There's also a newly built barricade to block the entrance. So the, the way is definitely guarded. Could I get perception checks, please? From the entire party. That's the one I didn't buff because I'm dummy. An 11, a 4, 12. Do I see 20 things? Did I put my glasses on? Nope. Come on, dice. You know, you, sometimes you've got that huge wind up and the pitch still doesn't go anywhere. Yep. <laughs> 11, 4, 12, and 9. Now, there. Bianca, you have been granted inspiration by chat, should you choose to invoke it. Uh, I think I'll save it for now. Not a bad idea. Yeah. All right. All right. There's nothing to do then, and if you want to let this family go, except approach the gates themselves. Are you ready, or is there anything else you wish to do? Uh, Esmeralda lets go of the cloak by mm -hmm. lifting her foot. The mother and just... wraps it around herself defensively, as if recoiling away from the burning moon behind her, gathers her little ones, their faces covered with soot and dirt, and rushes off into the night away from this place. Well... I guess we got all the information we need. Well, information we can get for now. I imagine you guys are here for the same thing. Uh, yes, the peculiar invitation for mattresses. They're very peculiar indeed. <laughs> Huge, rather. Large, even. Some would even say gargantuan. <laughs> if it was I mean, gargantuan, the, it would have advantage the on the grapple big. checks. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like my mattress already has advantage on grapple checks against Especially me. in the like, morning. I yeah. That yeah, it's true. Me. That's very true. <laughs> or if it doesn't, I have disadvantage, that's for sure. <laughs> the winding road ends abruptly under the watchful gaze of imposing statues flanking the massive city gates. Uniformed guards stand vigilant along a newly built barricade, and a gaunt man in immaculate priestly robes stands off to one side, scribbling into a large book. His quill stops as he adjusts his thin-rimmed spectacles and blankly observes your approach. A broad-shouldered guard sporting an impressively well-maintained beard and a grim look in his eyes steps forward and calls out, May the light shine upon you, travelers. These gates are closed, as you can see well enough. What business do you have here? Bianca will sort of flash the letter with the seal. Um... Uh, we have business in the city for uh, inquiring about some mattresses for purchase. If you wouldn't mind granting us entry, I think we can. Looks that we're well off to protect ourselves, though we've heard of the plague that's ravaging the city. The captain sees the letter in your grasp. The acolyte scribbling in the book looks up, eyes widen, taking interest. The captain makes a furtive gesture towards you, as if urging you to stow the letter out of sight. Uh, suspiciously, but conceding, Bianca will sort of put it inside her um, her coat once more. All right. The captain gives you a knowing nod. The priest glares at all of you suspiciously, and you are allowed to pass through the city gates into the Ruby District already a poor and beset upon part of town, now completely blocked off and quarantined, left by the city's leaders to the ravages of the plague. The priest- Esmeralda pulls up a coat. As a mess, stay safe. <laughs> Once you pass through the gates and head into the city, by the way, feel free to interject at any time. Even My apologies. I'm... No, you're fine. I just want to make sure <laughs> you're not completely on rails here. 
<laughs> Just past the arched gateway lies an eerily silent cobblestone path leading further into the city. Despite the slight breeze, the scent of death and refuse is overpowering with each step forward, revealing rotting corpses lying in the shadows and gutters. A whispery voice slithers from the shadows. May the light smile upon you, friends. Oh. You notice a darkly dressed halfling quietly leaning against a wall nearby. He flashes a crooked smile with a glint of gold and nods in greeting. What is everybody's passive perception? Every time I get asked this, I always feel like I'm about to embarrass myself. It's great. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Mine is a 12. I've got a 10. Okay. 11. Absolutely incredible. All right, then. <laughs> we're just, you, you know, just we, have, we have we're business. Doing what yeah, we can. We're, we're focused. We're focused we're on our peculiar mattresses. Yeah, we're, exactly. We're, 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 we want the mattresses. They're on sale for $300. You know how much queen mattresses are? Yeah. The sleep number only goes on sale once a year. Is that mm -hmm. Memorial Day weekend. That's how we do it. <laughs> I need she has a pickpocket. She's already just distracted by the gold tooth. Okay. <laughs> Shiny. All right. Immediately upon locking eyes with this individual, you recognize a kindred soul who may not be here to pick your pockets, but is already eyeing them with practiced ease. Um, I want. I'm just gonna nod to him in like a. Mm -hmm. I know that you're sizing me up. I've also sized you up. We can just skip that part. As they say in the uh, Yarnha, game recognize game. <laughs> mm. um, and I'll say hello. Greetings. You've all got business here with my boss. The name is Madden. Madden Gillett. I'm here to uh, take care of your escort. It's not an easy trip, you see. So you're here for us in particular, then? Looks like it, yes. You got the letter, the peculiarly large beds, the uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm, yes. I'm, yes. I'm just uh -huh. impressed that you can say that. Lots of practice. All right. I want to let you know before we head out. My job is to get you, guide you, to my master's manor. It's not to get tangled up in fights. I recommend we all put our most subtle foot forward and try not to get into any trouble because, trust me, it's in there. Everyone good? What kind of trouble would we get into this? And he kind of gestures to like, just a casual body laying on the ground. Like, <laughs> it seems like the trouble is not necessarily ours to deal with. I mean, maybe not, but you might be it's to deal with. They got How? that way for a reason, you know. For a, for a reason? Yeah, yeah. Torn apart in the streets. By what? Each other. But that's well, all that's right. That's what you're here to fix. It'll all be fine. Just uh, watch your backs, all right? How long has this been going on? Uh, weeks. Longer. Curious. Go ahead. <laughs> I was like, on me way. Do you know approximately how many people are left here? No head count. It's not like the local census goes through in times like this. The Ruby District tends to fly beneath the Hoi Polloi's notice. So this is the Ruby District that we're in yeah. now? Yeah, gleaming jewel mm. of Luyarnha. Yeah, a clearly corpse it's... bursts in the background after days of rotting, as Ew. if to punctuate the sentence. <laughs> it's like glowing with the flames of a burning acid. Like, yeah, yeah, it's glowing all right. Is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, is this this plague, this sickness? Is it throughout the city, or is it a problem of this district? Mm, it's the worst here, but nobody's really clear through it. I'm just uh. Here to make sure you get from point A to point B. If you want the full rundown, you're going to have to speak with my employer. All right? All right, we'll lead the way then. All right. From here on out, we stick to the shadows. As you pass beyond the gate, 
into the eerie quiet of the ruby district. A man dressed in the rags of once fine clothing stumbles out of an alleyway with a red handkerchief held against his mouth. He places a shaky hand on a wall to steady himself just before his eyes roll back and a stream of thick black blood erupts from his mouth. With a shudder, he collapses to the ground, stone dead, before his skull cracks against the pavement. Madden, your guide, recoils from the corpse, pulls his cloak tighter around himself. Like I said, from this point, we proceed in the shadows. The city is sick, and there's far worse between us and where we're headed. And he skulks his way into the darkness and leads you into the ruby district. Hmm. Welcome. Rather interesting welcome there. <laughs> we used to be given treatments and money, but I suppose an exploding dead body and a person vomiting blood it will do. <laughs> <laughs> and it certainly tells us what the state of things here are, but uh, yeah, let's... Leave the term is foobar. <laughs> There's garbage everywhere. Only a few of the iron lampposts are lit. The moonlight and the occasional fire are the only light sources in the otherwise dark area. The, sh the homes here are complicated, asymmetrical shapes made of stone. Or, what gave this district its name, the dark ruby-colored red uh, wood panel sidings that support steep, multifaceted tiled roofs. You can tell that there is rotting food, garbage everywhere. This place is practically deserted by all those except the dead and the dying. I would like the mm -hmm. group to make a, unless you want to make a different sort of approach, are you going to make your way cautiously following your guide or are you going to proceed with armed force? What's your preference? Stick to the shadows. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I don't think there should be any business of us to try to fix or mess with anything here, at least not until we get the full story. Mm, and we'll see if chaos. it wants to, to mess chaos. with you. All right. Could I'm I have a group, a group stealth check, please? At least half of you must succeed on this stealth check. Yeah, sorry. Well, okay, that's Seven. one. Not a one. That's one. That's one. And oh. Goddamn. I hate it. Hey, y'all, did I mention that I have to roll at a disadvantage because Armor. I'm wearing scale mail? Oh, <laughs> sorry, no. happy fun times. Maybe you could just take it off real quick, like in the yeah, shadows. Yeah, yeah, just, I got, I got a spare, I got so, a spare leather armor feed like that. So we okay. get a. Uh... I guess that's all up to me, huh? All right. Okay. Half of you succeeded, so those of you who are more accustomed to life skulking are able to assist the others in a sneaking past, bypassing. <laughs> odd shapes that move around. The cry of seagulls passing overhead and the soft lapping of waves against the stones are the only sounds that can be heard on this stretch of the docks. Your silent guide motions for caution as he slips from shadow to shadow. You're able to make your way further down as he leads you right down the main street, actually. You should each have oh. control over your pieces. Go ahead and start proceeding this way oh. using the cursor. Yep. Perfect. And uh, take whatever marching order you choose based on whoever is the strongest, whoever is the most willing to face danger. Uh, Esmeralda will take out her crossbow immediately and just okay. start uh, doing some recon around this particular area. But All very, right. very slowly because we're not going to punch people yet, chat. We're going to try a more <laughs> measured approach. Yeah. But if we have to punch them, we're ready. I'm just saying... For now, I might not punch a sick person, but I'm not ruling it out. Fair. <laughs> and Consulus will uh, take up the rear mm -hmm. just because he's real big and tall. And so he figures that that's like the best, most useful place for him. Yeah, I'm used to that. You can see over everybody. It's helpful. Exactly. <laughs> a brightly painted... Um bakery sign hangs from a single chain that creaks loudly as it sways in the breeze. Who was about to speak before I went into narrator mode? Oh, I was just going to say that Lesiath is going to, will, 
like weaves kind of side to side a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. It's probably like peeking around corners and like through darkened windows to see, like taking advantage of the that good stealth roll to mm -hmm. try and see what's going on. Okay, roll a perception check for me, please. Better than last time. <laughs> Oh, oh, shit. Oh. Uh, so busy being stealthy that yeah. I don't have to focus for anything else. Yep. <laughs> How dark is it now? Or is it still a flame? It's pretty dark, more? except for the, again, the eerie light of the almost burning moon. Okay, so by that logic, I can see everything. Yeah, yeah. if you have dark is vision, that, absolutely. I do. All okay. right. Everything seems to be going fine. You do see some flickering light coming down from this alleyway over here. But as you make the approach over the top of the bakery itself, two figures covered in dark feathers leap down huh? from the rooftops with a howling caw descending towards you. Roll for initiative. Oh, that's fine. Nah, I'm about to shoot some birds. Fuck it. That's New York City right here. Let's go. <laughs> And allow me to give you an up close and personal view of what exactly it is leaping down to attack you. Ooh, show me. Show me one shoe. What the frick is. Ooh. Oh, I, have to off my glasses. I mean, oh. honestly. Is he single? I'm sorry. That just came out. <laughs> that just came out. I'm sorry. I have a thing for wings. I'm sorry. It's, you know, under understandable. All right. Who do we need to get into an issue order? Bianca, what'd you get? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna hit on every monster I see. I'm sorry. Oh, I see. Uh, seems that my token is not assigned. Is why. That's fine. How do I do that? It was a 13, though. I got, I got it taken care of. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Pixie, you are first as these Corvian dwellers leap from the rooftops to attack. Um, how well can I see them from where I am? Not particularly well. You can hear them shrieking as they jump down. You'd need to move past this building right here in order to get yeah. better eyes. What yeah, would you like um, to do? I would like to... Uh, I'm going to move up. But instead of taking um, any sort of attack action, I am just going to take a hide action mm -hmm. and try and blend into the shadows. Okay, roll a stealth check. An no, 11. Not, not awesome. <laughs> How unfortunate. Is that it for you? Um, yes. All right, then. For now. Bianca, it's your turn. You hear this keening cry of these corvids. Um, am I able to move and sort of, uh, oh, shit. hide out oh, right on. here? I, I feel like that's, is yeah. that the corner where I could sort of, like, look? Mm -hmm. There's some crates of rotting garbage rather. you can use as cover or concealment as needed. Perfect. So, yes, I will take uh, half cover mm -hmm. and I will unleash vicious mockery at one of the assailants. Do you have a preference? Uh, closest to us. All right, so then. Unleash it. And I will cast that. It's something. Okay. That's a wisdom saving throw. Oh. Yes. <laughs> oh, I need to roll that publicly. I was doing that all sneaky like. <laughs> Too sneaky. Behold. A seven. <laughs> okay. The damage is inflicted and the kicker effect of vicious mockery also kicks in, which is disadvantage on my next attack, correct? Yes, that right, is correct. 
Uh, emotional damage has been inflicted. Rude. <laughs> Is that it and for you? And you can hear, yeah, but just for flavor, Esmeralda mm-hmm. can hear uh, the vicious mockery, the infernal you know flavor of this is that bianca has like a spanish accent when she's sort of speaking in infernal she's a, this is a bilingual a variant <laughs> tiefling yeah porque lo, no los dos yo soy puertorriqueño so. exacto tu padre es un chongo pelón <laughs> with feelings thus appropriately hurt esmeralda it is your turn Despite the fact that they are the ambushers, they seem to have caught you at just the wrong time, and you all leap into action before them. Oh. Ain't that something. Okay. What would you like to do? I have plenty of options, unfortunately, which is not good for someone with ADHD. However, <laughs> I'm going to try this. I'm going to... You know what? I'm going to start off strong. I'm going to stay where I'm at. I'm going to use my action. I'm going to actually do this. I'm going to... If I can click on the right one, I'm going to activate that boon. And I'm going to create a hex gun in my hand. This is a special class feature that is part of Steinhardt's Guide to the Eldritch Hunt. Lots of Ooh. gun magic, bone mm-hmm. magic, creepy stuff like that. Love okay. to see it. Yep. So she's going to basically giggle at the Spanish accented mockery. But at the same time, she's going to basically flip her hands in a weird motion that I cannot do because my wrist decides not to cooperate with me. And in her hand is going to appear basically a kind of a dark burgundy purplish sort of revolver that kind of looks bigger than her hand, but she can wield it with much more ease than you'd think she would. And it's kind of glowing this like eerie, just hell, hellish red up around it. And so she kind of holds it in her hand. And she is going to actually... is Where on this area can I harm? Because everything looks pretty open and I don't like that. There are some uh, stalls that you could hop into if you see like this stall. Somebody's meant to stand underneath it. Oh hell yeah! There's some okay. garbage in the way. It's not perfect, but it's better than nothing. No, that's cool. I can go zombie land on this. All right, cool. Um, I'm <laughs> gonna move here into the stall, and I'm gonna base. I'm not gonna go prone. Can I crouch? I can crouch down. Yeah, you right? can crouch. Okay, bet. So I'm gonna crouch down into the stall, and I think that will end my turn. She's just gonna aim her. You know, hex gun directly at mm-hmm. one of the two creatures, probably the one who has just been hexed by the vicious, vicious mockery. And did you summon the revolver or the sniper? The revolver. All right, excellent. That will end your turn. Mm-hmm. Next up, Consulus. Sort of in the mm. back, peering over things, not quite high enough, tall enough to peer over the buildings themselves, hearing the cackling of crows. How do you respond? Yeah, uh, Consulus will sort of rush forward to where the rest of the group has mm-hmm. wound up. Um, and I think Consulus has a has a sort of, he's been around. He's, he's you know, gotten in a few back alley scuffles before uh, in his youth. Uh, and so Consulus is going to, um, he'll pull out his pocket watch. Uh, and he's, he's going to just sort of um, say, I, we don't want any trouble. Um, and just see if that works, because talking is a free action. It's true. It's fair. Now, if you want to use an intimidate or persuasion check to try to get them to back down, I'll allow you to do that as a bonus action. If they have an in-game roleplay reason to just respond to your talking, totally free action. But at the moment, uh, they're kind of out for blood. Okay. Um. Well, if if I'm getting the vibe that they're out for blood, mm-hmm. then um, I'm going to click open my pocket watch, um, and as uh that happens, uh, the sort of pocket watch itself is going to begin to glow, mm. um, and it almost looks like one of the hands kind of floats up and off of the the pocket watch, uh, but it's more of like a light. It's glowing. It's not the actual part of the pocket watch. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Consulus is going to cast um, a Mind Sliver and sort of shoot it from this sort of pocket watch that he uses as his like arcane focus uh, at one of the crows and. We'll see what happens when I roll. That Here we go. Cool. I believe. That's five points of psychic damage. And I, I roll a save, right? Uh, yes. Intelligent saving throw. Right. That, um, a minus four to that. That's, uh, Ooh. that's going to be a failure. <laughs> that's not so good. Um, rip. 
Yeah, and you have to subtract 1d4 from the next saving throw you make. Nice, so, nice. We love still, it. I'm still in your head. The combo. Your head. the combo. Live and run free. Pew, pew. I feel that. I feel that. Inside my brain. All right, then. <laughs> On their turn, having been thoroughly demoralized, some force drives them still to leap down towards you. Daggers outstretched. The light of the scorching moon burning in their very eyes. All right. This one descends from the rooftop, gliding on its wings directly next to Bianca. And this one will flutter to the ground and rush forward directly towards Esmeralda. Come at me, bro. The first one attacks Bianca once with its beak and once with its talons. It lashes out. A 23, I'm reasonably certain that hits. But you yes, notice... Not only do you take seven points of piercing damage, but it burns. It burns with an eldritch orange flame for an additional one point of damage. A total of eight. Right. It lashes out at you with its talons. Does a 12 hit? A 12 will not hit. Okay. You managed to duck back just in time, but you still notice that its avian claws glow with embers of heat. The other one lashes out at Esmeralda, first with its beak. 19. Ow. Yeah, yeah. All right. Five points of piercing damage and again, one point of fire damage. What does it mean? The talents. <laughs> hey, Another hey, yo. For nine oh. damage total. Two grievous blows as these beings, empowered by the scorching moon and driven for blood, attack you. Uh, okay, well, it's gonna pay for that because I'm going to use a reaction to cast Hellish Rebuke. Ooh, very nice, very nice. So I can it. eat that. Roll 2d10, please. Assuming you're no casting problem. at level two. I am, because fuck this guy. Right, you're, you're a warlock, right? <laughs> oh, 100%. I got a fiend on my side. He's okay. pissed. Then you always cast at level two. <laughs> so you. Can, so this is 3d10 fire damage, please. <laughs> Okay, so roll 3d10, yeah? Mm -hmm. Roll 3d10, and that's going to use your reaction. Oh, I just ruined this man's whole career. I roll a dexterity saving throw. They're much more nimble than they are intelligent. A 15 is going to escape half of that damage, only taking 11. And furthermore, the fire barely seems to hit it. This being should be perfectly vulnerable like any other creature made of meat to the flames. Yet in the light of the scorching moon, it takes half damage from fire. Esmeralda points out that she's now heavily bleeding. Mm -hmm. She looks over to everybody else and says, they seem to be resistant to fire. And I'm going to gather it has to do with... For some reason, the moon is kind of acting up. I mean, it's called lunatic, so I guess that makes sense. But maybe we should take that into consideration when we attack. Yeah? You got it. Are you, are you all right there? Noticing. Absolutely not. <laughs> but it's okay. Because I got some form next round if I survive. <laughs> Pixie, it's your turn. The enemy has acted, and the moon is in fact haunted. Um, so Lesiath's going to, uh, to step a little closer here um, beside Esmeralda and say... I, I have no need for, for the fire to make my attacks and um, just draw her rapier from beneath her cloak and lunge forward with it. Let's see if they're resistant to being stabbed. Not many things are, to be fair. Ooh. Oops. I, That's I fine. We take the clicks. first one. However, it uses its reaction, its wing flutter, and it flutters backwards away from your attack. Causing oh. it to miss. What a bitch. Its reaction is now used. It can't do that again. But yes, quite irritating. Um, and like, it's it's obviously irritating Lesiath. Like, you can see on her face that she is unhappy with this. With one hand, she like reaches up and pulls her cloak back. Like, shakes out her hair. And just looks even more determined. Uh, and that'll be that'll be my turn. All right. 
Bianca, it's your turn. You have learned, you have noticed that these creatures... Hold up, I hit you last round and I was supposed to subtract 1d4 and have disadvantage on that, right, Bianca? Because I got I got severely right. mentally, like, sad mode. So you took 8 <laughs> points of damage, but I'm going to just roll a second d20. I'll add the math if it matters. Minus 1d4. Yeah, miraculously you're healed because math is hard. <laughs> Woo! Yay. And Clap it is it your for, turn. Clap it up for bad math. Clap it up for bad math. Okay, it is my turn. Um, having that our our psychically damaged uh, Corvid is on me, I will pull out my rapier as well, and I will attempt to go to duel with him. Okay. Your request to duel has been rejected. It oh, uses its wow. reaction to activate its wing flutter, sweeping back from your attack, moving five feet away as a reaction, causing your attack to miss. Oh, pesky Damn. little things. They don't like you, Bianca. Damn. <laughs> Do you have and any I other options? Yes. Uh, don't have anything else, but... I will move and uh, block possible attacks from Esmeralda. All right. Excellent. Speaking of Kate which, shit. Esmeralda, it's your turn. You have the hex gun in your hands. I do. What would you like to do with it? Um, so I'm going to use it to actually, because from what I understand, based on this lovely... Uh, information that was given to me, I can use it to cast my cantrip. So I'm going to use mm -hmm. it to cast Eldritch Blast okay. on this guy right here that is not being blocked by, Esmer by uh, Bianca because I might kill her. Let's not. Let's not do that. Um, so we're, we're going to cast that with my hex gun. And if I recall correctly, based on this, I can also use Agonizing Shots. When I cast Ooh. this, I can add okay. my Charisma modifier to the damage deals on a hit. We love it. So what should be happening here is this should be listed as an attack on your character sheet. Let me see if I can fix that for you real quick. Please do. So I'm like, oh, I'm learning something new today. <laughs> <laughs> These are pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. It is there. And I'm going to make it add your charisma modifier. Give me just a moment. You are the best. Thank you. Okay. It's on your character sheet and you get to fire it once it's one, one shot time. so go yep. ahead and click it it's under your attacks in the middle of your character sheet a oh, 19 really? to hit yeah can't dodge that <laughs> this corvid seems to have already been grievously injured perhaps from an encounter with another monstrous creature somewhere in the district oh that attack is enough to slay it though its companion seems to be completely fine it gives one last awking cry and then falls backwards in a spray of dark feathers that was your action. Is there anything else you'd like to do? Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything else I can do. I don't think so. I think I should remain where I'm at since Bianca is going to protect me since I am bleeding profusely. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think that will end my turn, actually. Okay, Consulus, you're up, followed by the Corvian Dweller. Uh, <laughs> Consulus is going to, uh, at this point, watch the one fall uh, and just kind of... Just, he's just kind of done. He's just kind of done with it. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it seems a bit, perhaps a bit ungentlemanly and, and a, a, perhaps a bit unsporting. Um, but Consulus is going to reach behind him uh, and he's going to pull out his, uh, his sort of small crossbow and just sort of very uh, stoically and very just like it, it not bothered at all to sort of like point it directly at the, the last remaining uh, bird and try and just get a get a shot off of it and just end this fight. Mm. Gentlemen do not start fights, but they can Oof. finish. Oof. Oof. Sorry. Oof. I rolled the wrong thing. I'm sorry. Uh, no, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, okay. No, it's good because goddamn. <laughs> I looked at it at first glance and I was like, is that a one they just rolled? I was like, okay. I was like, I could roll the attack roll first. That'd be good, right? <laughs> there we go. Okay. That's yeah, oh, goddamn. There we go. Much better. Much better. <gasps> Come on. I love you, Shadow. Mwah. Yes. Thank you. Chat has played a healing boost. Esmeralda is filled with resolve and may heal 2d4 plus 2 hit points. Dang. 
You're the best. I love you. All right. The Corvid is mildly inconvenienced as a crossbow bolt sprouts from its feathers. Lovely. Is there anything else for gentle uh, Consulus? Consulus will step... Uh, seeing how the the rest of the team is sort of faring, uh, Consulus will if maybe Consulus can move his piece. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Consulus will uh, step forward and kind of like get, uh, kind of like in between. I think I have that much movement. Uh, in between to sort of like block off any more damage. Like he's willing to take it in order to protect mm -hmm. uh, the rest of the the team. All right, you can't end your turn in Bianca's space, but you can yeah, end it on either side. I was trying to grab it. I'm sorry. It's good. All I'll good. Just, I'll All just, good. We'll say it's right there, and then he's ready to like duck in front if he yeah. if he needs to. Um, and uh, he'll kind of look at uh, the other three and say, "Shall we? Shall we move this along?" <laughs> yes please <laughs> offended by your lack of consideration for the, the monumental threat that it poses the Corvian dweller will direct its attention to Consulus as if daring you to move this along it attacks with its beak does a 15 hit oh uh, yeah oh, like a little bit and it slashes with its talons. I'm guessing a six misses. That's five points of piercing damage and one point of fire damage. Six. Cool. And then seeing its compatriot lying dead, its eyes flare mm -hmm. with the same orange light as the scorching moon above, and it shrieks angrily in your face. But the sound that emerges is not that of a cawing bird, but of somebody coughing, choking, wheezing, and pleading for help. Shit. I would like each of you to roll a wisdom saving throw, please. And I would like uh, Bianca to roll it with disadvantage. All right. Bianca's going to get a nat 20. Oh, not wise. Sneak or not wise. Oh, that's Where? tragic. That's tr tragic. Truly. Oh, no. The one in the 20. Wow. Oh, no. How is that a thing? This is where we ask you if you took the lucky feet. Uh, da, 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 da. I did not. But I do have inspiration, so can mm -hmm. I attempt a reroll? Yeah, for in what, with inspiration, I'll let you trash both of those results and just take the new result. <laughs> Seems oh, like the most fair thing to do. <laughs> the dichotomy of D and D. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Let's okay. go. Oh, I'm so nervous. You got this. I believe in you. Let's see. Let's do Come it. Come on, D and D. Nineteen, baby. And Let's go. Here's <laughs> Oh. You know, it's it's fine. We it, tried. It, it's it's fine. we tried. It's, oh, Everything's cool. completely fine. Nothing is wrong. This is nothing's normal. wrong. Either. Great. <laughs> the noise as this thing attempts to kill you, and yet it's making the sounds of an innocent dying horribly in conditions of unspeakable squalor, gets under your skin. Even though you're adventurers who have seen great many things, this is disconcerting. I would like both of you who failed your saves to each roll 1d100. Oh no! This is never gonna be a real roll. This seems fine. Probably. No, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. You're gonna get Pop Tart. A 68 <laughs> and a 73. Are those in the same band? Let's see. They... We get to go on an adventure together. Yay! Yay! We get cake! <laughs> All right, now I would like each of you to roll. Cake. All right, Leslie Eighth, your body breaks down, reacting psychosomatically to the noise. It rides directly up your spinal column, unsettling you. Roll oh, 1d10, please. Oh, my God. Oh. This is only the first fight. Why do you reckon us? <laughs> no, right? A six. Okay. In response... Your body begins to emit a foul smell that is unpleasant <laughs> even to you, and no amount of washing or magic can remove it. Oh. This will be in place. Guess it's not 
damage at least. Yeah, see, it, it could be worse. We're, we can just say you farted. Just say you got, you know, Crohn's disease or something. You got some digestive problems or something. Good, back up again. You rolled a two. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. <laughs> like hides in the shadows. You see this fart sound? As it screams, you hear whispers in the noise. You can see between the sounds, between each dying gasp and shuddering breath. Roll 1d10, please. All right. One. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. You stand under the light of the scorching moon, listening to these keening calls from someplace beyond enraptured by it and a change comes over you something in your countenance and all the others even your own friends when they look upon your face something trembles in their hearts as if you are no longer yourself i would like everybody who's present to please roll a wisdom saving throw oh my god i did that except for I you you're oh wait me uh, Bianca doesn't have to Except roll. Everyone else has to roll. Yeah. Oh. Because I'm not holding a mirror to myself. <laughs> exactly. A lot. exactly. I was just walking across the street. I'm going to get like one, dude. I got one in it. Okay. Both of you who just rolled the 12s, which does not save, both of you have inspiration from chat. Would you like to spend it? I have like three. Hell yeah. yeah I'm doing that. I'm saving it. I'll, right. I'll take what I get. Kate's letting it ride. Re give me another I roll on that, Briggsy. I'm going to die. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. I'll, Consulus I'll right and Esmeralda. Look at Bianca as if she's a stranger, as if she's not herself, as if she's one of the creatures lurking in this place. And both of you are now frightened of her. <laughs> as long as you see her, as long as she's in your line of sight, you will have disadvantage on your attacks and skill checks. And you cannot voluntarily move closer, which would normally be kind of a thing, but, you know, you're already there, so. So, okay, so okay. if I am near Bianca, mm -hmm. I get disadvantage on my saving throws. Mm -hmm. And what else? Ability checks. S skill checks. Can I stab Bianca? I mean, you <laughs> can with disadvantage on your turn. <laughs> uh point of order is this for forever or is this just like for like a couple of minutes it's for now for now this okay. is not permanent yet um it's like is there something on to, my teeth at the end of the stream now it's over <laughs> yeah i don't know why i prepared the whole thing when we're all just going to devolve into pvp right here right now um <laughs> <That's gross. laughs> let's as the person who is not afflicted it is in fact your turn all right um, well, it's nice to not be afraid. Um, yeah, it's okay. You just stink. We can deal with that. <laughs> exactly. That I can deal uh, with. Uh, all right. Uh, I am going to move around over here and we're going to attempt this, uh, running through with the rapier one more time. Mm -hmm. A 24 and it does. Oh, it does its annoying bird thing. It uses its... Oh, wait, no. It, it has to move away from you. So it's going to move over here. Oh, that's annoying. Yeah, it's awful. It's an awful, awful feature for them. So still, still holding up the rapier and looking very, very... Tom, you piece of... Lesiath looks at the others and says, I don't think it can do that again right away. Now is the time to strike. But yep. she's still like holding her rapier pointed at it, like giving him just like fucking stink eye. The extra stinky stink eye because of the like. The actually stinky stink, stink eye. Okay. <laughs> Bianca, it's your turn. And even though the cosmic secrets of the universe have been revealed to you, oddly enough, you're otherwise unaffected. You can keep going on. Your reality yeah. has been changed, but that's fine. Um, I think in. Uh... Lesia's uh, response, she says, you know, it's the, the net time is now to attack. Uh, and Bianca just says, and attack we shall. And she will come at the Corvin uh, with her rapier as well. Come on. 
Let's go. Oh, you're muted, perhaps? Yeah, plus one XP, everybody. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Every time I put myself on mute, everyone gets one XP. Nice. Yeah. All right. Well, I don't think you have any inspiration left, so unfortunately, nope. it just dodges you. <sighs> Esmeralda, it's your turn. Your traveling companion seems transfixed and transformed into something that you don't even want to see, something that defies your optic nerves capacity to process, what would you like to do? I'm going to refrain from wanting to shoot her because generally when she's frightened, she wants to shoot people. Because well, there that's are the still thing. people to shoot. True. Uh, so she's going to shoot the crow in the face. Okay. You have disadvantage um, on this because of the fear unless you burn one of your inspirations. Uh, I'm going to save them because Chad is very kind. So I, if I okay. recall, I have three. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. But I'm going to save them, so I will okay. roll with this advantage to do something. Uh, yep. So I'm going to use my Hex Gun to cast Toll of the Dead. Okay. Uh, nice. So we'll do that. And I guess we're rolling disadvantage. No, you don't have to roll anything. I mean, you can oh, oh, roll that's right. if you want, but you don't have to. Because with the Hex Gun, <gasps> oh, yeah. once you get multiple... Even that once you get yeah. higher level cantrips, right. then you can choose to multi-shot instead. But until That's then, right. you're fine. Okay. I see. I studied that too much. <laughs> <laughs> I studied the thing way too much. No, you're right. Sorry, my fault. Yeah, it, it's kind of <laughs> cool because it lets you spread it when you get higher level. Instead of focusing one yeah. high level cantrip on somebody, you can sort of distribute it amongst folks. All right. Yeah, I got excited. You're right. Sorry. <laughs> what am I doing? A wisdom saving throw? A wisdom saving throw. Yeah. Also, not exactly my forte. Great. Oh. Roll. 1d12 damage, please. Cool. Damage. Okay. Takes five points of necrotic damage as a distant bell tolls in uh, somewhere in the city. And it tolls for thee. Consulus. Oh, at the end of your turn, Esmeralda, please roll a new wisdom saving throw to stop being afraid of your friend. All right, bet. Uh, I don't think I have any reactions. I don't think I have any actions I want to add. I think I'm good. Oh, uh... Actually, I also have this, if I could use this, possibly. Drop it in uh, chat. Because I damaged them, yeah? Mm -hmm. So once per turn, when you damage an enemy with an uh, attack, you It has to be an them, attack yeah. that you made. So because Got you it. didn't roll an attack, no joy. Okay, <laughs> so I can only do it when I basically do like a... Eldritch like shoot Blast. Him with like crossbow. Or, yeah. Eldritch Blast. Was, okay, just want to make sure. Yeah, Eldritch Blast okay, from your hex gun would still work. All Got right. it. Okay, but since I cast a spell, it does not work. Got exactly. it. Exactly. Okay. I'm learning, chat. Uh... Yeah, I'm going to do that wisdom saving for now, because mm -hmm. I can't do anything. Kill me. Uh, you shouldn't have had disadvantage on that. I don't Because it's only on attacks. Time. Oh, wait. My thing fucking crashed. That's why. One second. Uh, well, that's fine. You made your save. So while you get that okay. back up and going, Consulus, it's your turn. Something about your friend seems eerie and alien beneath the scorching moon's light. You cannot voluntarily oh. move any closer to Bianca. However, you're already five feet away, so... Yeah, I was going to say. Um, this is weird. Whatever, I'll do it. <laughs> Send um, it. So, uh, gosh, I don't actually know how to do... Oh, okay. Um, I need our bird friend to make a wisdom saving throw. Can do. Oh, God. Does a 10 save? I'm guessing no. Uh, it actually does. So, oh no! Consulus, oh, oh, that's no. unfortunate. Yeah. And then does not. No. Um. Okay. I oh, want a failed save. Sorry, I'm reading this thing. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. It still works. It's just less damage. Sorry. Okay. So what will happen? Um, is Consulus is going to step forward and sort of like inexplicably, um, and very like. Con like contrasting to like everything that's go around uh going on around him uh he's gonna start kind of humming uh and he's going to kind of just sort of like hum this this like little tune to himself um and as he does he is going to cast dissonant whispers mm. um and so on a failed save um you take 3d6 damage 
Uh, on a successful save, the target takes half as much damage, and you don't have to move away from me. So take seven points of scary, scary whisper damage. Scary yeah. whisper yes. damage. It's one of the new types they've added it's in, in Steinhardt. It's the worst type of, of, of damage. It's spooky whisper damage. <laughs> Anything else for Consulus? Um, Consulus, I think, will step back a little bit, like maybe over here, kind of away mm -hmm. from Bianca a little bit more. Um, and he, you, the nobody else sees it, but he's gonna just kind of like clack clack another uh, crossbow bolt into place because uh, he's yeah, just it's very cool. It's a very cool move. Uh, and then do I need to make it a is. wisdom saving throw? Yes, again? you can make a new okay. wisdom saving throw. All right, let's go. That's a six. I'm still so scared. <laughs> yep, you're still afraid Wait. of your friend. Oh. Question, am I not afraid anymore? Or did, did I not make it you're or did no, I? You succeeded on your save. You're no longer okay. afraid. Oh, Unless so you want to burn one of your inspirations, Katie. Uh, No, I'm going to save it. I'm going to save okay. it. Okay, that just means the boss fight's going to be completely borked out of all proportion. <laughs> exactly. All right. That's my, strat That's my strategy. The Corvian Dweller with its ally destroyed and this bizarre transfiguration occurring before it uses its action to leap up use a withdraw to leap up onto the rooftop and creep to the other side attempting to vanish behind the column of smoke you cannot see it at the moment you don't know if it's still there if it's planning to strike again anything of the sort does dark vision like walk through smoke it does not <laughs> Because that physically, smoke physically blocks. It doesn't just yeah. reduce sight. Okay. It is the party's turn. Are you resolved to hunt down this foe or to proceed through the shadows? I mean, Esmeralda wants to beat the brakes off this friggin' pigeon, but she will go with, whom, with what the group wants to go. I... I think it would be best if we kept moving. Where is Modin? Does it through this whole thing? Yeah. What, what, Excellent question. Doing? Where is that bitch at? <laughs> he pops his head out of the shadows. Uh, my job description doesn't involve killing birds, all right? Get somebody else. Cool. The um, so what I think exactly is it? <laughs> it's to connect you from point A to point B. I'm about to connect this fist in your face. I swear to God, if you do that again. Anyway, what were you saying? I'm sorry, Bianca. Oh, no, it's fine. Um, I'm just, and she kind of turns because she doesn't know what she is inflicting upon y'all. Uh, but she turns and says, yeah, uh, to Consulus's um, point, we should just keep moving if this is just par for the course ahead of us. If this I is mean, the that's madness. Fine. I mean, that's fine. I like chasing birds, but at the end of the day, we are on a mission, and they're serving as quite the distraction, so. Yeah. We'll keep an eye out for it. Um, Lesseth turns to their guide and says, does your job description involve warning us if you see it returning and we don't? Oh, yeah, if I catch a whiff of it, for sure, for sure. But, uh, you know, there's a reason that you're here with all your guns, your magic, and all those things. We can do the killing, just let us know yeah. if you spy it. Nope. Yeah, it's called a tactical advantage. Like, you want us to help you, we kind of need to stay alive to do that. Mm. So, I feel like it's a win-win for us. Yeah. Um, as as the party kind of walks down the uh, alley, Consulus steps aside into the shadows because his dog is freaking out and he'll be right back. Relatable. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's why I'm it's downstairs with his dad. Consulus is just sort of taking a moment to be like, it's just Bianca, it's just Bianca, it's just Bianca. It's not weird. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. It sounds like a romantic comedy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Where do we leave off without leaving Katie too far behind? Oh, he killed a bird. Um before we go any further, actually, um, Lesiath would like to ask, um, so are these, are these things common around here? Do they just jump out of the darkness, flapping their wings every time someone walks by? Or is they this are a, now. 
It used to be. Is it something created by the plague? Did they used to be humanoid? Did they... Look, I'm a simple man, all right? I don't know anything about alchemy or dark rituals or the aristocracy and the clergy and their various differences and the transformative effects that may or may not have upon the populace. I am merely, merely a guide. I get the idea, yes. Mm-hmm. Shall we? I, uh, are out of curiosity, we the first group that you've, um, that you've taken through this, um, this process? Uh, no, actually. No. And is it safe to assume what happened to the previous groups? He's alive. One person is Mm -hmm. still alive. Out of how many? It was just him, you know? My, uh, my employer was looking for an expert in the field, and when that proved ineffectual, decided to get a little bit more or firepower. Well, I can't, I can't disagree. The, the, this, whatever this is, is take, is, will take some creativity on our part to uh, hopefully gain us a victory today. Shall we? Esmeralda Michelle. just shake, shakes her head like this is gonna be some bullshit. But follows them. Yeah. All right. It leads you deeper and deeper into the district, and as you proceed, through one of the windows, an odd light flickers and shines. Distractingly so, actually. I would like... Okay, so shimmering multicolored lights shine through a shattered window, casting dancing shadows across the ground. I'm sorry, it's just my black instinct, so I'm not going in it. I don't like that. <laughs> sorry, this is where on the map? Uh, this would be all the way down here. You're able to make your okay. way to this point without any further difficulty. But as you pass the second story window, just multicolored scintillating light flickers from a shattered window. Uh, can I roll a history check to see if horror movies exist in this universe? Because, <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, fantasy I'm fantasy it, films. Yeah. Fantasy. Yeah, fantasy right? Horror. I'm sitting here like, mm. I was like, nah, nah. <laughs> I'm like, I ain't trying to die first. Give me at least 15 minutes, okay? This, this is like a, they've got steampunk technology at this point, so they haven't quite made their way to silent films. Uh, but there are absolutely <laughs> stories that people tell around the campfire. Sure. <laughs> stories, maybe. Uh, yeah, actually, Consulus is going to kind of look to the group uh, and say, you know, I'm not one for fairy stories or, you know, children's tales, but uh, I... In, in all my years, the one piece of advice I've ever heard is don't go towards the shiny, mysterious lights. So let's just perhaps keep walking. And I see, agree. I see the shiny, mysterious lights as something not all that threatening. I can do it myself. I think Actually, it's less about the threat and more so that it's perhaps not in our own job description as uh, as our guide here has stipulated. Yeah, we're here to figure out the cause of the plague, not to look at fireworks. Out of curiosity, um, as someone who like innately can cast dancing lights, does this look like dancing lights to me or something else? Hmm, you looked at it. Roll a wisdom saving throw. That's good. Uh, uh, <laughs> I told, I told we all looked in its direction, though. No. Nope. Is it really just me? I was yep, nope. the moment that Briggsy opened with "I'm not touching that." I was like, unless somebody <laughs> explicitly says they're taking a look at it, I'm leaving it alone. I'm telling you, I ain't trying to die in no horror movie. I told you, I'm the first one to go. I know that trope. Nope. <laughs> Mm-mm. Mm-mm. A fourteen. Oh, a 14. As oh, come on, you, got- you look at it, it almost feels like there's a burning at the back of your eyes into your mind and you shut your eyes before it's too late before it takes hold 
And when you open them again, the light has gone out. All right, nobody else do that. Nobody else do that. Let's keep going. I agree. I, I would like I... to suggest that. Oh, sorry, you go ahead. No, please suggest. I just said I agree with her. She is. She... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Don't look at lights. Would, I would just like to suggest. Uh, far be it from me to assume, you know, a leadership. But um, I would just like to suggest that uh, we touch nothing. We look at nothing. We uh, maybe don't even walk too hard uh because it seems like this entire place is one giant trap uh and so i would just suggest that we tread carefully um and as he said that his giant bugbear feet kind of like knock over a tin can and he looks embarrassed <laughs> <laughs> as Marla just Quiet. slow claps very quietly <laughs> solid advice i'd say Whatever you do, don't read the lap. Breezes and listen. <laughs> see if it seems like anything has noticed the tin can noise. Stay silent. You hear muttering off to the northwest somewhere, and a ragged cough. But it's echoing down so many alleyways. Who knows how close it is? Dude, we about right. to get attacked by COVID. I'm not gonna appreciate that. <laughs> right. Too soon. Um, I don't like that. I, I said no realism in my video games. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we move forward then. Yeah. All right. Yeah, let's move. <laughs> yeah, here, let's go. You make your way so to the end of the district. Iron spikes cool. adorn the tops of the thick stone walls that surround an ominous, almost fortress-like manor. A green crest bearing a stag's profile decorates the center of the heavy iron knocker on the front doors. Your guide places one hand, stands up, kind of tall, halfling. Buds it against the door. A little grate opens, closes again, and the gates of the manor are thrown open for you. Mrs. Ackerman, the major domo, a well-dressed older woman whose face appears permanently etched with a sour expression that perfectly matches her demeanor. Upon seeing Madden with you, briskly introduces herself, Mrs. Ackerman, and motions for you to enter the manor. Uh, Esmeralda squints her eyes, looks at me, I can go you first. I got right. your back, though. All right, and uh, Bianca will sort of uh, say uh, thank you for receiving us and step in. Mm. She escorts you um, to the sitting room. Go ahead. Oh, Lesia follows, but she, um, under her cloak, has, like, a dagger ready in each hand. One in a forward grip, one in a reverse. Okay. Like, ready for anything that might come towards them. And Consulus will follow inside, mm -hmm. but gives just the most formal bow anyone has ever seen. Uh, just wow, there's a lot of bowing happening for a door <laughs> being opened. It's a lot of bowage. Uh, and he is just, and he goes inside. And the it's fact a lot of that it's. Bow from too. I was going to say, the entire gesture is amplified. Yeah, it's, it looks a lot fancier than it is because of his size. Uh, but he's just, propriety is very important to Consulus. And so he wants to make sure that his, his host is, is properly uh, thanked. Consulus is the best. Uh, that's an XP. That's I'd plus say. one XP for the whole party. <laughs> Madden. No, I'm trying to think you don't like us, Gnomes. What the hey? We're going to level in no time. <laughs> it's because I really need to put a cough button on here instead of just a mute toggle. Oh, That'd be the smarter oh, thing I to do. But I keep forgetting fair. to do that. That's for Shout out to allergies. <laughs> right? Exactly. I don't want you to have to sit here listening to me slurp on my water. Yep. No, I feel you. I feel you on that. I have to take my allergy meds before it is. <laughs> The sitting room door swings open as an impeccably dressed elder gentleman strides through them, followed by the ever silent Madden. At a glance, it is clear that this is a man accustomed to wealth and respect. Although his splotchy skin and advanced age suggest that his health may be declining, his steel straight back and fiery eyes suggest otherwise. The gentleman takes in the room with just a glance before introducing himself. Greetings, heroes. 
Thank you for responding to my letter. I am Lord Thomathan Rewalt, and we need your help. So it was you that sent the letter? Yes. Letters. Right. What was your name again? Lord Thomathan Rewalt. Ooh. That's very fancy. Lord Revolt, I uh, do not wish to speak for the group, but uh, we've already going seen to anyway. some of the... Yes, I will. But, uh, you know, you've promised quite a hefty sum, and we've seen some of the dangers that wait ahead. <laughs> uh, we had to fight there... pigeons. I don't like that. <laughs> I think they were more like corvids, but... Wait, crows, right? Like corvids? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yes. They are more but... crow-like, right? I mean... Yes. You know. Yeah, that's but, right. Yeah, that. but certainly something is a, is terrible, terribly happening here in the city. Mm. Um, I don't know. I I'd, I'd, I'd say that we'd love to hear any sort of uh any sort of information you may have to reassure us that there is actual hope to this mission, other than just you paying out uh for another sort of group to scout the dangers that are already very very apparent i assure you this is far more specific i'm not asking you to clean up the entire city this plague has an origin and i trust all of you to assist with scouring it you see as the plague spread swept the city twisted creatures spread throughout the ruby district it was I and the other noble families who agreed that isolating the district was the best answer until a cure could be found. The Radiant Church has been distributing a tonic that seems to be helping, but I question their sincerity. I have already hired a hunter named Borast to discover the truth behind this plague. Unfortunately, he was injured. He is recovering even now, here at the manor. I want you to pick up where he left off. May we speak with him? Yes. Yes, of course. Any information that he may have gained in his own investigations could prove invaluable. Yes, yes. Truly. I am particularly upset that the Radiant Church is attempting to slander my name with allegations that I have caused this plague by cavorting with alchemists and the dark arts. We How do have you? So no, you have If you were <laughs> converting with alchemists and the dark arts, they may have reason to believe that. And I'm trying to stay as neutral as possible, sir, but you don't have anything to do with this, correct? No, of course not. I would not be so foolish as to invite outsiders into my business if I had something to hide, risking my already sullied reputation over such a matter. Uh, DM question, would we be familiar with the Radiant Church? Uh, religion? Excellent. Yeah, let me try that. Anyone who's proficient in religion, they make a check. Uh, a natural one. Uh, <laughs> no. You said proficient, right? Because I'm not. But I want to give it a go. Yeah, you can give it a go. You'll get different information. Six. Or no information. Fuck it. Not, you're, not, you're not from around here, you know? You don't have a local <laughs> yeah, you know, denominations. I don't know that. The only thing Lesiev knows of churches is hanging out in graveyards, you know. <laughs> Not so much what goes on inside the church. <laughs> Valid. Did anyone else have anything? the architecture. Uh, d um, not religion-wise. Uh, I think Bianca sort of considers this information. It's like, um, so this Radiant Church is helping, and you're worried that they're perhaps part of the whole thing, and they're helping their advance their own agenda in in this affair or yes where, I mean, where are your alliances there their willingness to lay this at my feet with no evidence to suggest that i have done nothing but good for this city speaks to an ulterior motive i don't care who's behind mm. this i want you to uncover them perhaps it's the church perhaps it's other forces at work Find the information and clear my name. Discover some evidence that can help. 
And if it so happens to be that this evidence leads to the Radiant Church being responsible, I might be able to finance an additional 50 gold each to all of you. Consulus previously was like sitting off to the side and he draws himself up to his full height and he pulls down on the on the end of his waistcoat and uh, and says with great restraint and what of your people who are suffering and dying you worry about clearing your name when there are districts of people who are suffering when women and children are fleeing this city and you are worried about who's to blame Roll an where is your care for your people roll an insight check for me please consulus I would be delighted. Oh, that's a oh, 12. Dank 12. Okay, you are dealing okay. with, with the aristocracy in this circumstance, and they are quite adroit at concealing their cards, as it were. Obviously, whoever is responsible for this should have some capacity to resolve the issue. It is my hope that in the course of wiping this sullying dirt from my name, you will, of course, resolve the issue in a manner beneficial to the entire city. Consulus acts as though he's going to speak, and instead he just growls, like, deep in his throat, um, and he says, we'll, we'll see about that and just kind of sits back down. Can I trust that you all agree to assist me in this matter? Esmeralda Bianca's... just... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You first. Yeah, it's... Bianca sort of nods looking at the group. I'm just like, uh, no qualms from me. That seems pretty straightforward and kind of what we hope to learn from the letter, honestly. Whatever your motivation is, the end goal is worthy. Esmeralda just like is has been squinting eyes at this fool for like this whole time, but can't really unfortunately figure anything out from that. You want to roll an insight check to see if you can? I would love to. Go for it. It's. I know Four. shit. I refuse to learn anything. I am an <laughs> avatar <laughs> of ignorance, and I'm going to continue to be that. All right, then. <laughs> but Lord Rimmel just not. <laughs> provides you with a 200 gold retainer fee and just happens noticing, perhaps, that you are recalcitrant or, even worse, altruistic. Seasons the pot with an additional... How much gold was that in chat? Oh, we get some money. Yo, we rich, bitch. An additional 100 gold pieces. So a 300 gold retainer for the party and two we potions of healing. Us. Two potions. Of Damn! Each or for the party? Total. Total. Okay. As a pool. I do recommend you speak with Borast. He's already encountered some of the deadly dangers involved with this. Return successful and the rest of the promise is yours. Okay. Sounds good. Um, above table question. Who's yes. going to carry the potions or... I would love one of those potions, actually. I'm still kind yeah. of Yeah, I was going to say. Do we, do we have time, DM, to perhaps take a short rest? Like, take advantage of his hospitality? Yeah. Ooh, excellent. Before we move on. Yeah, you can take a short rest. Uh, warlocks regain all their spells. Other classes may have short rest abilities they regain. And you're all welcome to spend up to four out of four of your hit dice to heal right now. I'm going to heal right now. My, my house is bleeding. Um... While Ooh. while this is going on, um, yeah. Lesiath is going to wander just kind of to the nearest window, mm -hmm. look out into the night. She pulls her hood back down and puts her daggers away and takes a deep breath, closes her eyes. She's kind of humming under her breath. And uh, when she finishes taking this moment to herself, she will be 
Um, one moment. She will be uh, proficient in the insight skill. Ooh, fun. Nice. That's a uh, phantom rogues. Okay, okay, okay. All right. After availing yourself of Lord Rewalt's hospitality, there's a charcuterie board available, some wine and cheese. Looks like the pantry's been fairly cleaned out, so this isn't the good stuff, but it's definitely more than the people outside dying in the streets have. Fair do. You are welcome to go ahead and speak. He will ring a silver bell. You are escorted to your luxurious guest rooms, which is where you can have your short rest. You have an opportunity to plan your next moves or to interview the hunter Borast at the end of your short rest. What would you like to do? Borast. I thought you were saying Borat, and I was like, that's the <laughs> same, <laughs> actually. Okay, I'll, there's an S. No, you, no, no. I was like, I'm going to watch that movie tonight if I'm, you keep I'm, saying it. I'm not, do, was, I'm not gonna do the gag. I'm not gonna do the gag. Do it, was, do it, do it, so coward. Ready. I had so many, I was like, just gonna hit this guy with so many quotes. So I'm really glad that I didn't embarrass myself. <laughs> I was just but. hearing the Anacra crossover and that's a whole new level of tinfoil. And if Borat oh. shows up in this in this actual camp, it is in this if Borat shows up in this one shot, I'm quit I'm quitting. I'm Borat. <laughs> it's like, all right, good night, everybody. We're That's done. Right, good night. That's the end. Thank, Thank you, you to uh, our sponsor, to and uh, we'll see you but later. But Borat's here, and everything's just gone to shit. Yep. Oh, sorry. One quick point of order: Did mm -hmm. uh, he gave the party three hundred, or we each got three hundred gold? The party has three hundred. Great. Okay. Then yeah. never mind. Okay. <laughs> My man's trying to take all the gold. That's what seventy-five each. Yeah. Math remains hard. That's yeah. No, that was good actually. <laughs> it's luck. All right. It's 1090. There we go. Mrs. Ackerman leads the way through the many halls of the manor until stopping at a set of heavy double doors. She hesitates with an almost imperceptible flash of fear crossing her face before catching herself. He hasn't spoken much since we found him, but perhaps he might be willing to aid you she says, before gently knocking and opening the door. The room beyond is well lit by a crackling fire and candles in every corner. A large window looks across the city and sits just above a large four-poster bed. A middle-aged dwarf with a large bandage covering his left leg is lying on the bed and intently reading a leather-bound book. His eyes dart towards the crossbow resting on the nightstand before returning to squint at his unexpected guests. Mrs. Ackerman is not entering the room. She's merely opening the door for you to go within. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Esmeralda pushes Bianca slightly. <laughs> All right. Um, he's not afraid to, to step in and, uh, and raise a hand in greeting. He attempts to stand up in order to properly greet you. He sets aside his book. The movement loosens the bandage on his leg, exposing a dark and festering wound torn through the flesh of his thigh. Oh, please don't get up on our account. We are yeah, please, here yes. to inconvenience you. We'd hate to do that further. Also, please just stay there. <laughs> don't move. Just keep, you look very comfortable and so are we. We're very comfortable with this distance. Is that a flesh-eating virus, I see? Roll a wisdom saving throw, please, Briggsy. Why has it got to be safe? Oh, oh, every time. Natural 20. Okay. <laughs> it's a gnarly-looking wound. Mm. But yeah, just pretty, pretty gross. He adjusts the bandage and then introduces himself. He is, indeed, I am Borast Deep Reaver. I specialize in eldritch creatures and supernatural events. The dwarf has leathery nutmeg skin. His jet black beard and hair are braided with silver wire. There's a scar, three scars across his right cheek and eye. He's eyeing each of you suspiciously as if he could measure your character with a glance. Uh, Boras, we are to continue your work. Is there anything you can tell us uh. that can keep us uh, away from uh, you know, f ending in a bed at the Lord's uh, 
in the Lord's manner. You should be so lucky. I was hired by Lord Revolt to dispatch the beasts that began terrorizing the Ruby District, but by the time I made the journey, there were too many, too numerous. Uh, city guards are cowards. They'd rather hide behind their barricades than face the beasts. I met a few brave citizens in the Radiant Church, clerics who were fighting off the scourge. As far as I know, they were the only ones who dared stand against the beast, and I joined at their side. I followed the outbreak to an abandoned brewery near the center of the Ruby District. There's more of the creatures gathered around there than anywhere else. I don't know what to make of it, but I suspect there's a connection. I tried to sneak inside through a window, but something ripped at my leg. I'm lucky to have made it back alive. Hmm. Someone attacked an epicenter. Oh, I'm sorry. Please continue. No, an, an epicenter is as good a place to look, but uh, yeah, Whiskey. we're glad you made it. Um, let's just going to gesture toward his leg and say, um, this, is this how your injury presented itself immediately? Is this what has happened over time? It's not improved. I'll say that. Have you, is it what have getting you worse? Rest until help of some sort can arrive. I haven't been able to get any of the holy tonic from the church, the Radiant Church. You, this is the second time this uh, tonic has come up. Uh, who, what is it? Where, where is it coming from? Uh, Who's supplying it? Who's making it? The Radiant Church produces it. It's said to cure all ills and wounds and the like. It's been a great aid against this plague. You could go speak with them if you have the time. Perhaps they'd be able to help. Have they provided the t who have they provided the tonic to so far? They're distributing it amongst the people. Okay. Why? So any Sorry, go ahead. Oh, to anyone who asks for it, or are they it are they choosing? Limited supply, but they seem to be distributing it as best they can. What? And I apologize, friend, if you don't know this, but what gain would would they have at placing the the blame on the at the feet of Lord Revolt? Like, why why would they be doing that? I don't bother with local politics. That's none of my Man. concern. I show up, I see where the monsters are, I see who's helping, and I fight with them. <sighs> Um, honestly, not a bad, not a bad uh, approach to it. Uh, do you, do you <laughs> mind if I, uh, and I sort of gesture to the group too? Do you mind if I take uh, take my hand at this, at uh, this wound? I will not uncover it, but I'd like to attempt lay on hands on it. Mm. Okay. Is it a festering wound? It is like a festering it's just, wound. It's kind of fest. As Marla just, are you sure about this? That looks. For lack of a better term, disgusting. <laughs> I I agree, but I'd be interested to know if we find ourselves with this sort of damage, if there is any sort of divine mm. energy that may assist us. Because uh, true, have you tried the tonic on this wound? He hasn't been able to get a hold of it. Yeah, he's, he's been just never in bed resting. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Okay. Yeah, so essentially I want to use five uh, hit points from the pool to either cure the seas or neutralize a poison affecting the creature. So that's sort of my... Okay. Nice. Okay. Okay. Roll okay. a wisdom saving throw for me, please. Okay. Damn! There we go! Nice. Oh, she's okay, well, you can tell something is fighting you, something twisted and malevolent, but... It does help. It heals partially and it arrests the spread of the miasma. He eyes you gratefully. Wait, 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 wait. And with the renewed vigor, he'll 
set his feet on the side of the bed, swinging them back out, taking a deep mm. breath. You can tell that even though he's putting on a brave face, he's still in a lot of pain. And he reaches under the bed's mattress and pulls out an elaborately designed battle axe. It appears to be forged mm. from a shadowy material. And he hands it over to you. This mm, mm, mm. is an Abyss Warden's axe blade. It's a mark of a true Eldritch Hunter. And I can't wield it to secure this plague. It should be in your hands. All right, thank you. Uh, this'll, and she sort of like looks it over. This'll prove useful out there. Bianca's okay. strapped. You can add the uh, Abyss Hunter's battle axe to your inventory, and I'll go ahead and pop that up for you. Nice. Thank you. Nice. Uh, I got an axe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm so Ooh. happy you got that reference. That made me so sad. I would use it for so many times <laughs> and somebody finally got it. I'm sad. This blade Ooh. can be converted nice from blade. an axe to a sword. And when you do so, you can use a... Um, if you attack somebody with it, then use a bonus action to change modes. You can release a little wave of radiance. The axe, awesome. the, the long sword does extra damage against aberrations that are medium size or smaller. And if you need to kill something big, switch it to axe and it'll do extra damage against large sized aberrations. <laughs> hey, yo, you're Reinhardt. <laughs> we love it. We love it. Hammer down. Yes, that's literally earth shattered. That's cool. Now, from here, do you plan to make for the brewery at the epicenter yes. of all this? Sorry. Or do you plan to go speak with the Radiant Church, which could take more time, and a significant amount of time has already passed? Uh, what? It, in all honesty, you've you've been the one out and and amongst this. What would you advise? Do you think that there is is worth and merit in in speaking with the church, or do you think that? this is something where we should just spring into action and he does like an awkward like <laughs> thing and then he looks a little bit embarrassed <laughs> way <Horace> around <laughs> looks up at you with a thought and said well the holy tonic could only help if he gestures down at his like you find yourself in similar circumstances but there's more of you than there was of me perhaps you'll be all right without it Consulus will turn to the group and say, I don't wish to slow things down any further, but I believe Boras is right. If there's any chance of protecting ourselves against, and he gestures to the wound on his leg, uh, whatever this is, uh, I feel that it, it might be beneficial for us to, to go in as, as well uh, prepared as we possibly can. Yeah, you make a good point. Um, I mean, I'm fine visiting this Radiant Church and perhaps making our case in the same way that we talked to Boras. Uh, I just do not wish to be indicted to some other crusade to clean up the city as they are, basically. Of course. Uh are we Are we in agreement then? Yeah. All right. Think so. Three out of four. Stop in, get some tonics, get in yep. our way. Get well, and, and uh, perhaps also uh, some some answers because uh, again, the the people are are suffering and the and the people are dying and here we sit safe behind the walls of these gates and. Well, I, th I think that we must do something about that as well. And he looks out the window or something. I don't know. <laughs> if they're willing to give it, yes. And, and, and I think. Middle distance. <laughs> yeah, dramatically middle distance. looks away. Yes, just dramatically looks at his pocket watch. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about yeah, that. Bianca. No, no, you're good. Uh, I think Bianca sort of like agrees with Consolas, but she still has like, she's like, if they're willing to give it, I think if there, if there is anything to be hidden, then perhaps they may not trust outsiders like us, but we'll do what we can. Consulus kind of just like nods thoughtfully. 
you and now so, bear oh. the weapon of an eldritch hunter, perhaps that will uh, make them more inclined to to throw their support behind us. Hmm. Agreed. Put the battle axe on the back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So rad. So rad. I'll post the art down the line too. I didn't prepare really it on good. here, but the yeah. art cool. I would love to see that. Yeah. All right then. Are you ready to head back through the Ruby District towards the Radiant Church? Let's go. Is okay. there another way that we can go? <laughs> can we <that's> go <laughs> yeah. Can we not encounter the pigeons well, again? Now, now that you've made your way through there once, uh, I think that you'll be able to sneak your way back. Just know that horror lies in every single alleyway and every shadow. I think the every point shadow. has been made, right? As we travel, can I just keep an eye out for anything, any notes that may have been left um, mm. in these camps? Mm. Nice, nice. A, a lot of get out. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. There's nothing worth stealing here. Dip. <laughs> There's some old markings around the manor about like how to get in, but they've been scratched out and replaced with abandoned thread. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Abandon right. hope. I got it. The Shate on Esperanza. The eerie silence of the Ruby District and rotting stenches suddenly give way to the sound of cranking machinery and a cloud of choking coal dust. A monstrosity of riveted iron plates and columns is embedded into a cliff face with a platform controlled by gears and weighted chains. Madden steps quickly onto the platform and begins prepping the controls while motioning for you to join him. Uh, what is uh, this? Yeah. This is the elevator that's going to take us up to the Radiant Church, and we should hurry up because it's loud and it's going to draw attention. Right. points. <laughs> I'm. We've trusted you this far. There's no. It's not any more dangerous to trust you again now. Yeah, it's not like we have a choice. We gotta keep going. He's yeah, watching we get the in. rooftops for the sign of wings and the alleyways for the signs of the twisted former inhabitants of the Ruby District. The gates swing shut and a blast of acid smoke fills the air as the platform lurches upwards. The spectacular view of the city you're getting now is spoiled only by the smell of oil and rust and the deafening clank of metal gears. Luckily, the ride is short. The gates of the platform open once more to reveal a broad courtyard filled with a line of sick and ragged people. They stand in long lines under the imposing edifice of a magnificent cathedral, waiting to reach the priests distributing medicine from glass vials at the front of each line. White-robed priests distribute chunks of bread or hold buckets of water in ladles as they walk the crowd, receiving tears of joy and whispered words of awe in return. A light shines in each person's eyes. Perhaps the hope of salvation or perhaps the fever already laying force in their bones. So many of these people look to be ill? Ill or particularly fervent. You're not sure which. Oh, I don't like this at all. Miss Marlowe just leans over to Bianca and goes, I get that they're helping, but me and religion don't really get along very well, and I see they're helping, but I got this awful feeling in my gut. Yeah, help us seldom without its uh, repayment down the line these days. Uh... There's one thing I learned in this world is there ain't nothing that's free. Something's up here. Yeah, so maybe Lord Revolt was uh, onto something. So. Yeah. Um, can I potentially insight to see whether I can tell whether this is fervent devotion or potential delirium among even just the nearest to me? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a gut-churning ambient mood right below the thin veneer of false hope. Everything here is more run down than a wealthy church should be. The once gleaming white walls have turned dingy gray and dull. The priest's expensive robes are looking the worse for wear. 
It's not long is the after you. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Is the food and water looking fresh, though? Uh, it's not rotten, but it's not fresh baked, <gasps> baked loaves. Okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I just want to make sure. Okay. It is not long before a higher-ranking priest approaches. Perfect smile, warm brown eyes, and a perfectly groomed appearance. With him is that same bespeckled acolyte you saw at the front door of the city. The one what? who was taking notes when you entered. Oh, this is cool. Okay. It's cloud. Okay. Blessings <laughs> of the light be with you. I am Vicar Henry Inonder. What aid do you seek here? You don't appear to be sick or injured. No, we're just devoid of knowledge. We would like some information, please, if uh, you don't mind. Uh, enlightenment and wisdom. Yes, yes, of course, of course. That is... Quite the weapon you wield has is Borast well. Uh, yes, he's uh, he's recovering uh, back at the manor, and uh, we've taken on his mission from here on out. Ah, oh, excellent. Borast, he was invaluable assistance in combating the plague. It is thanks to him that we secured the platform that leads down to the Ruby District below. Without it, we would have been cut off and unable to render any assistance whatsoever. It's a brave soul. Yes, yes, of course, of course. What can I do for you? How can I help you? We are hoping that you might be able to tell us, I mean, anything that you've learned about about the plague that in, has been inflicted upon the city. We hear that you produce a tonic that can turn back its effects. In order to create something like that, you must have some knowledge of of what the affliction is. Ah, the holy tonic, he produces a vial. It's mostly see-through, mostly clear, slightly milky, and <laughs> light sparkles through it when he holds it up. Would you say that it's a little glass vial? A little glass <laughs> vial, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little glass <laughs> vial. I'll see what you did, Lar. <laughs> yes, miraculous properties blessed by the church itself, produced by our, our wise, the wisest amongst us, a cure for all ills. I know not exactly how it combats this plague, but it, there is no affliction we have found that is able to withstand it. Do I get the impression that he believes what he's saying? Roll an insight check. Come on, new proficiency. Come on. Okay. You got it, you got it, you got it. Mm, 12. <laughs> uh, you when you talk like that. Earnest and honest. Okay. There's a young girl uh, you recently rescued from the Ruby District who was afflicted by this very plague and is being cured by the remedy as we speak. Uh, and Bianca sort of takes that. It's like cured or just a piece of her pain. She is on the mend. Expected to make a full recovery. And why... And Consulus, this whole time, has just been quiet as he sort of surveys this mm -hmm. mass of people. Um, and it is, it is clear that he is, he is holding back rage and, and tears and anguish. Uh, and he kind of turns maybe a little too quickly and maybe he stands a little too close over this acolyte. Um, and he says, and why then again, are you here? Why are you not there in the Ruby district trying to help as many people as you can? Why do you hide here behind your walls? Here we lend succor to so many already. They are recovering within the cells once given over to our monks. We render aid to the people from this place of safety. Not only food and the holy tonic, but a, but a high ground, a, a sanctuary against the evils that are out there. We must keep those under our care safe. We cannot venture forth. And Consulus will kind of nod thoughtfully um, and he'll say, and these evils that you oh i forgot how to talk for a second uh it happens to us all <laughs> um, yeah. I, was like, I was so excited about my drawing i'd forgot how to talk <laughs> yeah. and, uh, brain really said f you nah. no right it's just like a hard adhd moment uh, <laughs> uh these these evils that you speak of this this plague that afflicts the city where 
has it come from? Why, do you know anything of its origin or its its make? Uh, something this, any sort of gestures at the people. Um, this this does not happen uh, by by chance. I I do not think. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh my t- my no, very inspired. tall that's friend, great. you are goes goes the end. The end. <laughs> no, Hold my it t- that's what he does. He just punctuates it with like a respectful like, and now it's your turn to talk. Oh, my tall <laughs> friend, you could not be more right. This corruption lays at the foot of Thomathan Rewalt and his friends amongst the nobility. They are heretics and parasites. They only take from the people. And, and seek why? to lay this at our feet like the cowards they are. They have delved into forbidden alchemy, seeking to expand their already incalculable power and authority over the rest of the populace. And in their doing so, in these blasphemous experiments, have unleashed this plague upon the people, meddling with things that should not be meddled with. And you have evidence of this or merely belief? I know Thomathan and his ilk, and I have heard the whispers, but they are too cunning to leave behind any particular trace. I know parasites when I see them. Right. Well, I mean, we are not here to look for sides, but instead for look for solutions, at least for the time being. Um, is there anything you can tell us about uh, what Borast found about the brewery being the epicenter of this. Oh, he hasn't spoken to me of anything. After he helped secure the platform, he went off to to go forth and do the good that you speak of again, tall friend. (laughs) But I had not heard from him since. I did not know of his state until you informed me. Well, he located what he believes to be the center of the start of all this so um we'd love to know if there's anything that you can provide in regards to that or uh anybody here that is seeking the radiant church's help that uh may be familiar with that side of the city i i couldn't think of anybody off the top of my head who might know of such things or at least none that are fit to speak the survivors are still recovering sleeping off the effects of the fever but i would be more than willing if, you're, if you are attempting to aid the people of this city, please, I can't give away too much of it. There are so many who need it, but this vial of the holy tonic is yours to take. And Bianca will accept it and sort of like look at it in the light. It's like, mm-hmm. well, thank you. Um, we will be sure to either report ourselves or send Boras once he is in better health to report on our hopeful success. And the light shine upon your fa- your path, good friends. Now, forgive me. I must tend to the sick and the injured. You can do that. Anything else you'd like to do while you're here at the Church of Radiance? Oh, man. I feel like we're just missing something massive. No. And that, that grin does not help my feeling. <laughs> any. I don't like that. I don't um, like that. This is just my face. I don't know what you're talking mm-hmm. about. This is my resting that. evil face. I don't exactly. Exactly. Uh, I think Consulus will actually, he will say that. He'll turn to the group and he yeah. will say, I learned long ago that trusting one's stomach in situations like this is often the difference between life and death. And I just cannot shake the feeling that something here is is not as it seems. Uh, I, I d- permission to be blunt. You... Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure they caused this. What makes you think so? Well, the idea that a religion is unwilling to help all of its constituents generally means that they are only paying attention to a select few. There's only two reasons why they would do that. One, to make themselves look good, so they can maintain a certain plausible deniability for their actions. They say, "We didn't do this. Why would we? We're helping some people." The other reason is that they do not give a shit about the people down below and only help people who are devoted to their religion. And they're, in essence, bribing undying devotion to be cured of the disease, which, again, is also not a good thing. 
do we know for certain that everyone who's here are devotees? That's um, why we should ask. But uh, if we're because, yeah, Leslie would lo would like to kind of move through the crowd a little bit and maybe <laughs> just ask of a few folks like are you a follower of the like where in the city are you from are you a follower of mm -hmm. the church just kind of gauge that a little bit okay these are survivors of the ruby district almost entirely uh the entire city is feeling the effects of this plague this curse but it is very much concentrated in the ruby district which has been quarantined and the platform that goes up and down connects this church to the ruby district so these are survivors who have escaped from that area. They are not all necessarily uh, worshipers at the Radiant Church. Many of them are, many, many of them are leaning in that direction, but it just seems to be folk from the Ruby District. Whoever has made it here. Whoever's made it out alive. Yeah, Consulus will say, in the interest of fairness, I, I am willing to admit that you know, supplies are sometimes limited, especially since it seems like this is some sort of like very complicated alchemical, uh, you know, alchemical process to to make whatever this is. And I'll gesture to the vial that Bianca's holding. Um, but uh, I perhaps we discuss too much, but I I just think we should keep a wary eye about ourselves because I just. There are many getting hurt between in this unseen war, and those are the people that I am concerned about. I'm not concerned about the rich, I'm not concerned about the wealthy, I'm not concerned about the powerful. I am concerned about any just sort of gestures at this like massive crowd, uh, and he'll just kind of get quiet one once again. Valiant Crusade. At this point, I believe it could just as easily be either side that is responsible for this. I, I don't think we have enough information yet to discern which it truly is. I agree. I agree as well. Well, what's, a, what's our next step? To the brewery, and I'll keep this close. I don't think we should rely upon it unless absolutely necessary, but... Uh... I'm happy to carry it. Uh, Smeralda and, uh, and Consolas, you took the potions, one of each. And Lesia, are you okay? I did bring two potions with me that we purchased ahead of time. Uh, I'm quite <laughs> Would you right like one? Moments. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I do agree that if we can avoid using this this tonic, whatever it is, that that's for the best, even if only so we can return it to Borast. Agreed. Yeah. And, and so uh, though we be headed to a brewery, I do believe that the advice to look at nothing, touch nothing, and particularly drink nothing is um, <laughs> is good to continue to apply to the situation. Consulus looks a little bit disappointed. <laughs> Abandoned brewery. Abandoned. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. You don't know. Maybe you don't know. They they've got kind of casks. They could yeah. have a tap room. You know, they could well, have a drinking room yeah. still. You yeah, know, maybe a beer garden room. in the back. <laughs> Just saying, I I love a good tap room as much as the next go, but you know. <laughs> each step as you descend down the elevator once more, each step through the Ruby District is worse than the last. But eventually, the devastation becomes overwhelming. The very air feels on fire beneath this scorching moon and is cooking the countless corpses littering the streets. Some have burst open from the heat, releasing a putrid stench into the air. The few living souls that can be seen are woefully frail, with tattered clothing barely covering skin so dry that it audibly cracks with every movement they make. Their eyes are empty voids with any shred of consciousness gone, long gone. After what feels like hours of skulking through sullied streets to avoid the roaming beasts, the abandoned brewery comes into sight. A cluster of slumped over beasts lay in the courtyard leading to the front door, and it's unclear if they're dead or alive. An ear-splitting screech gives away the flock of corrupted raven creatures on the roof. 
Madden, your guide, coughs quietly before nodding and disappearing into the shadows. Now, before... This dude. <laughs> hey, he has one job. <laughs> Check out. And speaking like, of... I don't get paid enough for this. Speaking of one job, we are going to leave our heroes here. Standing before the abandoned brewery, trying to determine their entry. As Steinhardt's guide to the Eldritch Hunt will return in just a few minutes.